Good morning and welcome to a, a recorded service. And yes, unfortunately, we are back on level three. And thus, we cannot meet or gather in person. And so, this is a recorded service. And thank you so much for joining us. We know that you're watching on uh, YouTube. And I just pray that the service will be an anointed one. And um, that we'll still be able to bring all the glory to God in the service. Let us just start with, a, with some prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning that, Lord, even though we come in here and we, we aren't able to meet in person, that we can just be here in spirit, Lord. We pray for all of those that are watching this morning, Lord. We pray for those people that um, are maybe feeling down and low at the moment with these new restrictions, Lord. We pray that you will give them that comfort and that peace. Lord, we lift up the whole world at this moment as it goes through another wave, Lord, and we know that there's so much uncertainty, Lord. We just pray that you will just be in the foreground, Lord, that people will seek you first. Lord, we also lift up our country. We think of South Africa. We think of all the issues that we have in our country at the moment regarding all the the COVID, but Lord, also just the people and the economy and everything that goes with our country and the issues that they're facing at the moment. Lord, we also lift up our church. We lift up BFF, Bridal. We think of every member of our congregation. We think of those that are, are watching, but Lord, also those that are far away, Lord. We think of all of them this morning. We think of Kempton. We think of New Beginnings. We think of Imapopeni. Lord, we also lift up our project, El Piso. And Lord, as we know, it's a difficult time, uh, Lord, even for things like schools and these projects, Lord, we just pray that you will still allow us to do the work there and just to bring you the glory. We think of our district, of our trans district. We think of our region. And Lord, we just pray overall that there's a revival in our churches through the midst of all this chaos, Lord, that we are able to rise and and bring you the glory, and bring you the honor. Lord, we also pray for those that have lost loved ones during this difficult time. We pray that, uh, Lord, they're able to, to deal with that grief. We think of those that are struggling, especially the elderly, and maybe those that are in uh, retirement villages and old age homes, Lord, that aren't able to see their loved ones. We lift them up to you this morning. We just pray your peace and comfort upon them. Lord, we also lift up anybody who's sick and suffering this morning. Maybe they're struggling even with COVID, Lord. And Lord, we just pray this morning your healing touch upon them. We pray that, Lord, they will feel the strength return. And Lord, that they could recognize that the healing comes from you. Lord, we also just pray at this time for every single family that's represented in all of our congregations. The extended families. We just pray for restoration in families that have, have had struggles, Lord. And we pray that, Lord, as they put you first, Lord, that that unity will be restored. And Lord, now as we just spend a moment or so in our own personal and private prayer, Lord, we raise these issues to you. So, Lord, now as we continue, we just pray that every aspect of the service will be anointed and will bring you the glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, I'm just going to light the candle. And um, as always, I light this candle as a symbol of Jesus Christ's light that he brought into this world. Today we recognize Jesus Christ and His ultimate sacrifice on the cross of Cal Calvary. Amen. We're just going to start off with a worship song. And if you're there at home, just enjoy. Maybe you can stand and sing loudly now. Raise your voices. Yes, 
traffic. Sorry, I took us down. Good morning to all of you watching us on YouTube and so on. And I just have the announcements. Um, so currently, um, because of the COVID lockdown, we cannot gather together. We're not allowed to have services. And so this will be for this Sunday and the next Sunday, 10th of January. And then after that, then we do not know if they will then lift the lockdown or if we will continue. So we will communicate with the church what happens after the 10th of January. Then for New Beginnings, also, unfortunately, we are not able to have the church service at New Beginnings. So this will be this Sunday and the next Sunday, and also until further notice. Then also for the Zoom meetings, we may be restarting that again, but that will be only in about two weeks' time and so on. Then so just going to ask Pastor Josiah to pray for the basket.
Good morning, family. I just want us to, to pray for the basket. I think we all know that this basket and it's a salvation basket. And uh, all the names, we know that in this kind of time that uh, the COVID-19 is taking place, we carry on praying for our fellow brothers who we believe they are far from the Lord. We trust that the Lord will make a way for them. Let us bow before the Lord and close all our eyes. And you can raise your hand where you are and pray. Father, we came before you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We lift up all these names that is in this basket, Lord. We believe, Lord, that one of the good days will follow them with them. They will come together as one, Lord. And we pray for them right now that, Lord, may they receive your Holy Spirit, may be touched by your name. And remember to come back and to fellowship with us. Lord, we cannot work alone without them. We know that we need them as much as they need us, Lord. Where they are, you know them where they are, Lord. May you touch and bring them into the kingdom of Lord. And praise the name of good Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While we're still on the house of the Lord, we can all now come in together and worship and praise the Lord where you are. Let's praise the Lord and shout for the Lord. And when the Lord found us praising him, Lord will answer. This corona will never do us nothing. We must carry on praising the Lord. Amen.
to you. Have you got your Bible with you today? Amen. Hope you got your Bible with you. Are you sitting in your lounge or in front of your TV or on your on your uh, phone? If you haven't, don't you want to don't you want to pause this and don't you want to go get it? Because you can do that. Praise God for technology. Amen. I want to talk a little bit today about about something that I think is is vitally important for most of us. I want to talk about integrity and. When we walk with integrity, I believe there's excellence in our lives. So I want you to turn to Colossians, the book of Colossians, chapter 3, and we'll be reading verses 22 through to 25. Colossians 3, 22 through to 25. All right, I'm going to give you some time to get there. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. One servants. Obeying all things your masters, according to the flesh, not with our service, as men pleases, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. Verse 23. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. Praise God. It goes further to read, But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done. And there is no partiality. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, that your word is exactly what it needs to be. Full of truth. And that your word is our compass. Father, may we, may we truly, Lord, fall in love with this word. May you etch it on our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, church, we might, we might be bemoaning the fact that, that we're in lockdown and that we, that we can't come to church. And yes, fellowship is important for us. Believe me, for us, fellowship is important. We're missing news. We really love, it's been a challenge during this COVID season, uh, even to come and join with our masks and we can't see each other's faces. And just this last Sunday, I was speaking to you about and challenging you and saying, be, be aware as you interact with each other. Amen. And here we are now, uh, the government has is, is, is locked, the whole country just about down, all religious gatherings are stopped. Uh, and, and I think it's important for us to realize that the Word of God doesn't stop. Yeah. And, and so I was considering, what should, I, what should I preach on? And I was wondering, are you a person of integrity? You see, church, because for many, mediocrity is the norm. Mediocrity is the norm. They want to do as little as possible and still get by. You know, they want to do as little as possible and get by. You know, I'm a Christ follower, but I want to do as little as possible for Jesus. But God, I want to tell you today, church, God didn't create us to be mediocre. He doesn't want us to barely get by. Or, or, or for this, to do what everybody else is doing. Amen, Pastor Josiah. Amen. God wants more from us. Yes. God has called us to be a cut above. We've, we, we're called to be a cut above. He has called us to stand out in the crowd. Stand out with our flesh. No. Stand out with the anointing that's in our lives. God has called us to be a people, I would like to submit to us, a people of excellence and integrity. Amen. And I firmly believe that the only way to be truly happy in this life, is to live with excellence and integrity. Because if anyone knows, you know. You know if you've undercut the thing, if you're busy with rubbish. And I can tell you now, people that have, hey, you might look and think they're having a lovely life, but they are worried, they are concerned. What if I get caught? What if this happens? So listen up, church. Listen up, church. As, we, as we're entering 2021, we're in it. Can you believe it? We're in 2021. Can you believe it? Any hint of compromise will taint, will put a damper, will blacken our greatest victories and our greatest achievements. Let's not compromise, church. Now you might be saying, oh, Pastor Jonah, that's all fine and well. That's all fine and well. But what does it mean to be a person of, of excellence or integrity. What does it mean to be a person of integrity? A person of integrity 
goes the extra distance to do what is right. Amen. To do what is right. Yes. So it's a choice. You're either going to do, do what's wrong or right. There's no gray line, right? There's no sitting on the fence. They keep their word even when it's difficult. Even in COVID-19, they keep their word. Yes. People of excellence show up at work on time. If they can during COVID-19. They give their employees a full day's work. They don't leave early or call in sick when they're not. And they present a quality work with a Christ-like attitude. See, church, I really do believe God doesn't bless mediocrity. Because why do I say that? Why do you, why, Pastor Jonah, why do you say that? Because I believe that when you're living a mediocre life, you cannot be connected with the Holy Spirit. Because God is perfect. Amen. God is about doing the best that you can. No, I'm not saying that you are doing the best that I expect. I believe that a full life with a decent attitude, a life of, of worthy integrity, is being the best you can be. Colossians 3, 23 and 24 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Not with my heart. Right? What's the anchor with your heart? You must work with your heart. You mustn't work with my heart and try and achieve my goals for you. Pastor Josiah, not, not your goals for, for yourself, not my goals for you. You've got to do the best with your heart. How? Huh? As working for the Lord. How? Huh? Who for who? Not for men. Don't we fall, if you've got to be honest, don't we fall into that trap? Not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from who? From the Lord as a reward. And so, you see, a life of integrity is quite simply this. You know you will get your reward from God. Notice it says here, and whatever you do, and that's working for the Lord, whatever you do. Now, I believe if we work with that standard in mind, God promises to reward us. Praise God. Praise God. If you want to live your best life, church, Start aiming. Let me just take a step back. For, start aiming for godly excellence and godly integrity. In your life. See, the easiest thing for me is to point to Pastor Josiah and say, you've got to live this, 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 and I can set up a whole bunch of standards for him. The easiest thing for me is to, is to point to whoever, is to point to, to Tia or Ian or or. Or I can point to Pietro, Danny Pietro, and say, you've got to live a life of integrity according to my standard. The bottom line is you have got to live to the best of your ability. So in other words, if you're supposed to be at work at 8, get there 10 minutes early. I'm not talking about a Western culture, we're talking about a godly culture. And don't get there early and, and then have a nice little kayaki and a cup of coffee and you only start work at half past eight. And what about thinking, have you thought about this? What about leaving a little bit later? Go the extra mile. For who? For Christ. Let me ask you, if you work, let me think on your typical morning. I want you to think on your typical morning. How many people arrive early for work? How many people arrive, arrive late? How much aimless wandering is there? How many walk straight in and get coffee first? They'll clock in and then they'll go and get coffee and they only start working when the time's even passed. How many mingle and finally get to their desk late? I know from my my limited experience now, I've been in ministry way too long, but most people spend, in the morning, spend most, most of their time on the phone or talking, or, or, or even during the day spending times when I worked in an office environment, uh, playing games or sending jokes or on the internet. They're not doing what they should be doing. Half of their day was doing what they wanted to do. God, they ask, God, why don't you bless me? Why don't I ever get a promotion? God blesses excellence and integrity. Because it reveals the heart condition. 
And then you don't worry about the blessing. But pastor, everybody's doing it. Everybody gets to work late. Everybody plays on the internet. Uh, even when the boss is out, everybody gets just let's loose. Everybody laces around when the foreman's not in the meeting. Everybody takes an extra long break. Everybody goes for smoke breaks, even those that don't smoke. Maybe so, but listen up. You're not like everybody else. 2021, you're not like everybody else. You're a Christ follower. You are called to live a life that brings glory to God. You represent God. That's right. You, you, you represent God. 2 Corinthians 5.20 says this, Now then, we are ambassadors. What a privilege. When you follow politicians and politics, when they get appointed an ambassador, wow, it's such an honor and a privilege. You are an ambassador for the most high God. Hallelujah. Wow. Put on your best suit. <laughs> now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. <laughs> so, how you live, how you conduct your business, how you manage your time, how you handle your children, how you react when trusted, it's all a reflection of our God. It adds a difference to excellence and integrity, doesn't it? But let's have a look at two definitions of of this uh, integrity. And I'm, I'm finding it from Webster's Dictionary. And the first one is the integrity is the firm adherence of a code of especially moral or artistic values. Incorruptibility. And then this one, my favorite one, the quality of state of being complete or undivided. Completeness. Are you completely sold out to Jesus? Where's Jesus for you? Is you are you so sold out? For Jesus, that you cannot but live a life of integrity. And that you cannot but live a life of excellence. Not please, your excellence. See, that's all that God wants. You see, my excellence is not your excellence. We, in our humanity, in our flesh, we rate it. Excellence to God is you doing the best you can do. In your current scenario. Can you remember when you were a baby in Christ? God doesn't expect you to be able to preach a message of, an hour. And now as you walked on, I think to the pastors now, those that perhaps have a district license when you started your first sermon, remember? And remember now after you've been ordained? And how do you preach now? So God, as you walk with God, the expectation grows. And you are you. And I, I nearly said me is me. And you, I am, I am me. And you can only do who you are. But we look around and I say, oh, I want to be like Pastor Uncle. I'd love to be like Nicole Fisser. I'd like to be like Pastor Josiah. And all I need to be is Jonah. And so 2021, as we enter this year, I want to challenge you today to start making more excellent choices in every area of your life. Even, listen to this, here's the challenge because it begins here, even in the mundane. Maybe you're asking, Pastor, what is the mundane? That that is not as important. That you write is not important. You might be driving in a car that hasn't been washed for a month. Maybe your boot and your back seat are filled with, with a whole bunch of rubbish. Now, I'm not condemning anybody. Nicolene, I'm not condemning you. <laughs> but I don't like driving a vehicle that's dirty. Now, maybe you're thinking, Pastor... I drive a scrap heap. What good will it do if I make it look? It doesn't, it's not going to look any better. I really do feel that if we start taking care, I'm just using the car, obviously. I mean, what I'm saying is just look at the mundane stuff in your life. Because as soon as we start giving in the so-called mundane, we give, in, we, we, we give over, what happens is it rubs off. And so it starts a negative and so it rubs off into a more negative. And next thing when you look at it again, you're so far away from the car, it's just not funny. You with me, church? I believe that we need to remind ourselves. You see, that's the only way that we can stand out in the crowd. We need to remind ourselves that we represent Almighty God on a daily basis. Not just a Sunday. Not just a Sunday. Each one, reach one, bring one. Not just a Sunday. 
That bring one is not just a Sunday. In what other ways, Pastor? Well, when you go to the East Strand Mall and maybe you accidentally knock something off the Edgar's clothes rack, do you move on? Now, as we're getting older, this is becoming more of a reality. Do you move on or do you actually get down and get the... <laughs> or do you run and hide and walk as though nothing has happened? You just discreetly just kick it under the rack? Blame someone else for knocking the clothes off? People of excellence, cross followers, go the extra mile to do what is right. Not because they have to, but because they know that they're honoring God. You see, church, this compromise of integrity will keep you from God's best. A pastor wrote this. Phenomenal. He said, I was in the store parking lot one windy day. And as I opened the door of my vehicle, the wind blew. I had several pieces of paper onto the ground. I didn't really need the papers. But I didn't want to litter either. Each time I went to pick one, a gust of wind took it and blew it further. Have you ever done that? Have you ever had that? I always, I always, I always wonder if someone drops a piece of paper like he has. They'll run up to a point, but if they drop a hundred rand bull, <laughs> they'll taste it. They'll taste it. And he says, each time I went to pick it up, another gust, gust of wind and so and so and went on. And I thought, no, I don't want to go chasing around the whole parking lot all day, trying to pick up these papers. He says, he says I glanced around to see uh, plenty of rubbish lying there anyway. And I was kind of in a hurry anyway. You know, you know. And I came up personally with plenty of excuses why I shouldn't waste any more time chasing all of these paper cuts. <laughs> I almost talked myself out of picking up the papers. But then I decided, no, no, I'll do the right thing. I'll go pick up the stuff. And it took me a while. But I wandered around that whole parking lot picking up every paper. Every time the wind took one paper with a gust as I was bending to pick it up, I wondered, what am I doing? Just leave it. The store will get someone to clean it up. But I kept on cleaning until I was certain that I had them all. And I even added a few that I believed weren't mine. And when I got into the car, I hadn't realized that a couple was sitting in the car park next to mine. True to life story. And they rolled down their window as they recognized me. We talked there for a couple of seconds and then the young woman smiled and she said, we were watching to see what you were going to do about all those papers that flew out your car. You see, church, the bottom line is, whether you realize it or not, people are watching. They're watching how you dress. They're watching how you treat people. They're watching how you work. I'd like to ask us today, in 2021, what do they see? What do they see? Are you a good representative of God? Or are you compromising? On the so-called insignificant areas. God wants us to be people of integrity. People of honor. People who are trustworthy. A person of integrity is open and they're honest. A person of integrity doesn't have agendas and ulterior motives. A person of integrity is true to his or her word. A person of integrity keeps his or her commitments. You see, church, people of integrity are the same in private as they are in public. Amen. Because they know there's always, they're the same as they are in private, as they are in public. Because they know there's always an audience of one. Yes. Luke 16, 10 and 11 says this. Luke 16, 10 through to 11. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. As he who is unjust or what is least is also unjust in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will co commit to your trust the true riches? See, church, if we can't be faithful with a little. How can God trust us with the faithful of a much life of, a, of an unbelieving saint? 
every day, church, let me tell you. And probably even more so in 2021. Your integrity is going to be tested. Do you know those folk who, who fall into sin didn't start big? They generally started with a few hundred or even 20 rand or 10 rand, and which turned into millions. Understand <laughs> that the compromise is a downhill slide. Having to stretch the truth to get the new account to balance. You know what? God will not bless that. And I close with this. Somebody put it this way. Don't do something that you wouldn't be comfortable reading about in the newspaper the next day. Don't do something that you wouldn't be comfortable reading about in the newspaper the next day. That summarizes a person of integrity. You know, Donna Huerson stole 10 rand from Josiah Maremi. Headline. Yo, yo, yo. Imagine. Josiah Maremi gave 10 rand to someone in need. Josiah Maremi got paid too much change at the pick and pay and he returned it. Uncle Tehran got paid too much at the OK Bazaars if they're still open and she returned it to the cashier. Are you going to choose with us as a leadership team? Are you going to choose with us to be people of integrity? People of excellence. Serving God with everything that we are. If so, won't you bow your heads with me? And let's, let's just see God's face. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the glorious riches that we have in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you today that we can be blessed out of our socks for who you are in our lives. And so right now, Father, we just want to covenant with you. We want to be people. In 2021, we want to be people of integrity. People completely sold out to you, Lord. Father, we don't want to be focusing on, on all the things that are insignificant. We want to be focusing on our God. And we understand, Lord, the challenges that we face in this year. Lord, we want to, we want to tell you we trust you. And so, Father, may we live for that audience of one. Nothing more, nothing less. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Great church, as we come to our close, I just want to remind you now, as we're going to take up the tithes and offering, you'll see the Zappa logo up. You can, you can take your phone out and you can use the Zappa and you can zap the church. You can send your tithes and offering or you know the banking details. You can contact Pastor Uncle Teron as well. If you haven't got them, you can EFT it. Uh, but in two weeks' time, if you don't want to do that, you can put your offering right now in your envelope, and as we've done before. And in two or three weeks' time, when we do meet again, uh, we can have a wonderful, large offering again. So remember, God loves a cheerful giver. So shall we just pray for the offering, and then I'll close with a benediction. Father, we do thank you, Lord, that we have this wonderful privilege of giving back to you. And so, Father, we know that your word is clear, that you love a cheerful giver. So, Lord, may we give from the abundance of our hearts, understanding that you have given us everything we have. In Jesus' name. Lord, may you use this mightily, Father. May you guide and lead the eldership and the leadership. May the stewardship of these resources be to the glory of God. And now, may the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with each and every single one of you. May we know, Lord, today, that we are not, that we are not God and that you are. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Great church, have a wonderful Sunday and be blessed.
You are 